Well, hello, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Our next trolley stop is here, and our next trolley stop is now. Welcome back to another all-new episode of PR from the Hearts Children's Book Spotlight Series. To be precise, we have reached episode number 171. That is the 171st trolley stop here at the Children's Book Spotlight Series. My name is John Massalonis, the host of the Children's Book Spotlight Series and the manager of PR from the Heart. And of course, joined as always, he is back with me, back in the saddle after his first full grooming on his end of things is Little Forest. And we are super excited to spend some quality time here with you here in our neighborhood this week is part of a very special trolley step. It's one of our favorite times of the year because it is National Reading Month. Raise your hand if you're excited and that you're enjoying National Reading Month. We see many hands from our, from the little ones on screen as well, too. I know that this is one of, this is actually Little Force's first celebration of National Reading Month. And one of the reasons why we take the time to read, especially reading children's books, is there's times in our life when we experience doubt, self-doubt. And that really can be one of the biggest bummers that we experience when we just move through an interesting day on our end of things. And it is so good. It's such a good feeling to know the fact that that self-doubt is only temporary when we have neighbors that come across our path that encourage us, that remind us to believe in ourselves. And one of the things I know when I experience self-doubt on my end of things, I always just go to Little Forest. And Little Forest always reminds me, and he speaks, you know, doganese, right? That's, that's his official language. But he reminds me, John, you've got it. I believe in you. And all it takes is just that one person to say, I believe in you. And especially if it comes from the heart and the soul of the beautiful dog, then you know that things are gonna be turning out okay and even better than expected. And leave it to a wonderful new children's book and one of our newest furry friends here at PR From the Heart to help all of us see the way, especially for children at this point in time who are moving through difficulties and believing in themselves and if they're experiencing self-doubt. And one of our favorite times of the year is also almost upon the horizon. National Pet Month is just around the corner as well, too. So we encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars, to head on over to Amazon.com to purchase your copy of Shenley O'Doodle, Half Golden, Half Poodle. Such an adorable children's book that we're going to be sharing fully here on episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. If Amazon.com is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing, you can leave a five-star review. That is one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for our featured guest here on episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. The trolley heads from San Diego all the way to the beautiful state of Virginia, joining us here in our neighborhood as our featured guest in episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlight series is children's author Annesley Hackathorn, one of the newest members of the PR from the Heart family. Annesley, Little Force, and I really appreciate your time and thanks for joining us here today. Thank you. I'm very excited. Oh, Little Forest has been excited to have this conversation for what seems like 10 lifetimes, so to speak, because he's here and he's able to communicate with some of his fellow furry friends. Right off the bat, we encourage all of you, if there's a special dog that you have in your life who helps you to remember how amazing and how awesome that you are, if you are experiencing any sort of issues with regards to self-doubt and believing in yourself, and especially if there's a little one in your life who's moving through that kind of challenge as well, we encourage you, if you haven't had the opportunities to do so already, to subscribe to PR From The Heart's official YouTube channel and to share this very special trolley stop that you are now enjoying. That is episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. Annesley, we always start off each Children's Book Spotlight series. I love the very beginnings of our episodes because we always dive into an author's origin story. And you really have a powerful story. You're not just the traditional children's author, 
the fact that you worked in the school system on your end of things and also as a dog breeder and that's so that's so fascinating on so many levels i'm sure that we could just spend a whole conversation talking about breeding dogs but if you could share with us especially those who are learning about your story and your book for the first point in time here through the children's book spotlight series what really inspired you to work with children as an elementary school guidance counselor and also as a dog breeder? Well, after I graduated from college, um, I was an elementary school teacher, which I enjoy. And then I made the decision to get a master's degree. So I chose the field of elementary guidance because the state of Virginia was getting ready to do a lot of hiring for a, a mandate and be sure that there were counselors in all the schools. Okay. So I've always loved dogs and I've had dogs and I love their companionship. So they are definitely a passion. But while I was in graduate school, I had a husky puppy who was not well behaved and needed training. So I hired a trainer, became my husband, and through our life together, we owned and bred dogs. Um, in 2003, we discovered golden doodles long before they were as popular as they were, are today. They are an amazing breed of dog. They are. And it, it's interesting because I, I've seen many golden doodles out here in San Diego. And there's something really special about golden doodles. Now, again, there's there's a lot of dog lovers that tune into the Children's Book Spotlight series, but if there's someone out there or, or many people who are saying, I've heard of golden doodles, but I'm not sure what they're a blend of, a mix of some of their quirks and characteristics, what really is a golden doodle and why do they stand out? Why really are they so special? Well, golden doodle is a cross between two dogs. It's called a hybrid. And typically those two dogs are a golden retriever and a poodle. And poodles come in all different sizes. I um, breed standard golden doodles. Um, so it's a standard poodle and a golden retriever. And they just have a beautiful curly coat. Um, people love the fact that they do not shed and they're hypoallergenic. Hmm. So, you know, there's not many big dogs that are hypoallergenic. And their, their temperament, they pick up the, the I love you from a golden retriever. Uh, the standard poodle is number two in intelligence for dogs. And the golden retriever is four. So they're very intelligent. Um, they just want to be with you. They are true companions and just people loving, smart, beautiful dogs. One of the many reasons why I love your book it's very informative about teaching children, parents, families, those who are dog lovers about golden doodles. There's some fun facts about golden doodles at the end of Shen Leo Doodle, Half Golden, Half Poodle. And of course, we're going to be talking more about your book throughout the course of episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. Was there a specific point in time on your path when you knew that it was time to be a children's author, to share this message and really bring your two biggest passions together, working with children and working with dogs. Well, Shenley was born in 2003 and she was from our very first litter of Golden Doodles. So I convinced my husband to let me keep her so she would be a demonstrator dog, the ambassador we used to call her for Golden Doodles. And I had her for 14 years. Um, and I used to always say, someday I'm going to write a book about her because she was just such a special dog. Aww. And I did write a book and I wrote it in 2005 and it sat in a drawer. Hmm. I unearthed it and um, brought it to publication in 2021. So it took a while. <laughs> but it was, it was a wonderful experience. I'm so glad that you did move forth with this because I'm a firm believer that the best things happen in life when you least expect it. 
And if there's something that is meant to happen, it'll totally happen exactly when it's meant to. I can I can connect with your experience with Shenley, who we'll also be talking about as well more throughout the course of episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlight series. The love in such a short time, because uh, Little Forest has been in my life now, I believe four months, if I'm not mistaken, but it seems like 40 years, like 40 years worth of love within four months. So I'm, I'm so excited for you with the fact that the love and the bond that you shared with Shenley is now being felt in the hearts and the minds of children all across the country and all around the world. Whenever we move forth, whenever we, we trust our intuitive guidance and say, okay, this is what I meant to do, whether it be uh, start a new gym membership, whether it be open up a business, whether it be write a children's book, we can experience those self-doubts and those challenges and difficulties and obstacles and problems and stressors and troubles and worries, you name it, they're kind of the same thing, but they're kind of phrased a little bit differently. What were some of those challenges and difficulties that you experienced through the process of writing and publishing Shenley O'Doodle? And what were some of the key things that you feel helped you to get through to the other side of those challenges and difficulties? Well, time was definitely an obstacle. I thought many times about this book that was sitting in the drawer. Um, and But I was, you know, raising children and working full time as an elementary school guidance counselor. So the day only has so many hours. Well, I retired and then COVID came. Mm. And during COVID, everyone was staying home. And I decided this was a good time to open the drawer and make my dream of publishing Shelley O'Doodle um, a goal. So I worked with April Cox, mm. who is very prominent in helping authors self-publish and helping them make their dreams come true. And she is phenomenal. So she was very helpful. She had a lot of connections. She had an editor and an illustrator and... We did a lot of Zoom meetings, but I'm very indebted to her for her help in publishing Shenley O'Doodle with me. April April does great work, and she truly cares about children as well. And it, it's always, it's it's fascinating when there's times in her life, you know, we're, we're talking about one of the primary themes of our conversation today, which is self-doubt. And there's times when we can wonder, is this going to work out? How is it going to work out? And there's those wonderful people. I tend to call them earth angels. There's wonderful people that come across our path where it's kind of like answers to our prayers, right? Where we're experiencing a challenge, a difficulty. I know that when I called Little Forest into my life, I said, man, like, I, I you know, it's, there's, it's a specific kind of breed that I'm looking for. It's a, 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 a Shih Tzu Maltese. How is this going to happen? And I was introduced to his breeder out in the Riverside area, just outside of Anaheim. And I wanted to do puppy training as well. And there's a wonderful place out in San Diego called Bella Wolf, a husband and wife team by the name of Robert and April. And they came into the equation. So it's always important. And we're reminding all of you who are tuning into episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlight series that if you are if you are trying something new, this is the spring season, right? Where it's a time for new beginnings to not necessarily be afraid in any way, shape, or form. And even if you are afraid to move through those feelings that you're experiencing, those challenges and difficulties, because just as, of course, we're communicating here in episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlight series, your your dream, your goal, your vision can come to reality in the process. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to be talking more about, we've already been talking about dogs for a large part of our conversation here today on our end of things. Um, Shenley, it's, Shenley O'Doodle is not just the title of your book. You already started to talk a little bit about the relationship that you had 14 years. So I kind of did like the doggy mathematics where, where for me it's like four months seems like 40 years. So 14 years could seem like 14,000 lifetimes. But before we dive into the pages of your book, I really want to do Shenley O'Doodle the proper justice and the care and give her the attention that she deserves to connect with her heart and soul. Could you 
talk to us about the journey that you two shared together and really what what she helped to teach you about yourself and also life. Well, she was the best dog ever. And just like in the book, her mom was a black standard poodle and her dad was a beautiful golden retriever. So Shenley O'Doodle is a real dog. I remember the day she was born and I'm the mom of two amazing sons. So I used up my great boy names with them, but I never had a daughter. And Shenley was my favorite girl name. It's a, a beautiful Irish name. So I gave Shenley my Shenley O'Doodle name. But she was just a wonderful puppy. She was always ready for adventure. She loved to be outside. We would take long nature walks and um, she loved the ocean. She would love chasing the waves and trying to catch the seagulls and just digging in the sand, you know, just like a little child. But she loved people. And, you know, every morning when her eyes opened, her tail started to wag and it just wagged throughout the day. She never met a stranger. Um, she was very intuitive, very intuitive of your feelings and mm. would, you know, your highs and your lows. And, you know, she just wanted to be with you. And, you know, she taught me as she did to live every day to its fullest. That's beautiful. And there's, there's, there's so many things that dogs teach us and it's important that we take the time. You know, dogs really re teach us uh, one of the many things, especially is just to be present, just to be fully exactly. present. You know, like a dog isn't necessarily worried about what happened yesterday or, you know, what's gonna be happening three days from now. A dog gives unconditional love fully in the present. And there's a lot of times where we may struggle to be present. And so this is how you're able to experience more love, more joy, more compassion, to receive more from your furry friend in the process. Again, we want to thank all of you for spending some quality time with us here in our neighborhood. You are enjoying episode number 171 of PR from the Hearts Children's Book Spotlight Series. Joining us is our featured guest here on episode number 171 of the program, children's author, Annis Lee Hackathorn. Momentarily, we're going to be diving into the pages of her new children's book, Shenley O'Doodle, half golden, half poodle. We encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars to head on over to Annis Lee's official website, which is virginiabeachgoldendoodles.com. You can also head on over to amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing. One of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Annis Lee is to leave a five-star review if you feel guided to do so because that reminds her that she is doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books, for all educators all across the country and even throughout North America, teachers, principals, librarians, superintendents, if you are interested in facilitating a virtual author school visit, with Annis Lee as well. We encourage you to connect with her via her official website again, which we've included in the description below of episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. One of our favorite parts of any Children's Book Spotlight Series episode is when we actually crack the binding of the book and we do it again and again and again and dive into the pages. And again, this, this is something that now that I have a furry friend to call my own, I've always had dogs throughout my life when I lived in Buffalo with my family, but this is, you know, truly my first dog. So when, when Little Forrest and I cracked the pages together of Shenley O'Doodle, the experience was something that I really can't even put into words. We, we, we always encourage viewers to be able to tune into the program and to, of course, enjoy the book fully. So we don't necessarily like, like to give away the whole kitten caboodle, as we like to say, on the children's book Spotlight series. What will children and parents and families learn about and enjoy when reading Shenley O'Doodle, Half Gold and Half Poodle? Could you take us through Shenley's journey throughout the course of your new book? I would love to. Um, I would like children to learn a little bit about dogs, you know, different dog breeds and their characteristics are inherent. 
Um, I tried to fill the book with a lot of really feel good messages. Mm. Um, I, in the story, initially, Shenley's excited to go to doggy daycare, which is a very fun place these days. And she wants to meet other puppies and play with them. And she notices, um, for example, Danny is a Doberman Pinscher. And when he comes in, he looks exactly like his mother and father. Um, there's a little Springer Spaniel and her name is Sassy and she looks just like her mother and father. And then Shenley, <coughs> who's just a, a cream color dog with all these curls, looks at her black standard poodle mother and her golden retriever father and she doesn't look like either of them. So that's where her self-doubt sort of starts and mm. she, she has to work through, you know, what is my purpose? And um, so teamwork, determination, accepting other people, being brave. Um, I even included um, learning the, um, the ability to say that you're sorry, mm. which I feel is, is very important in our world. But I would say kindness would be, um, you know, a very strong theme. It's also a beautiful adventure. That's one of the other things that I love about the book is, is that, you know, whenever you see, I, 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 this is one of the earliest memories that I had as a child. There was a movie that came out called The Adventures of Milo and Otis. I think it came out like in the late 1980s. And then of course, you know, we remember movies like Benji, right? You know, those uh, 101 Dalmatians, right? And, and a lot of times uh, when, and actually one of my more recent favorites, I think it was called A Dog's Journey with Dennis Quaid. I think that came out a couple of years ago. And so dogs are always on these wonderful adventures and you see these real heartfelt characters. You, you see Fred and Sassy and Danny and, and Chi Chi. And, you know, one of the things I know that, um, and, and it, it can kind of irk me a little bit is, is that, you know, sometimes people feel that dogs are dogs that dogs necessarily may not necessarily have emotions and feelings, but I really feel that like dogs are exactly like us. They just only have fur and that dogs have their own insecurities as well too. And so throughout, throughout the journey, we see the fact how at the very beginning of the story, you know, Shenley is kind of questioning her worth and her value and wondering, okay, well, you know, I'm different from these other dogs. And by the time the end of the story rolls around, she's a hero. And she realizes that she has inherent worth and she has value and that she's a leader and how she was able to connect with her own inner strength. That's really one of the one of the redeeming qualities that I really love about your book is, is that there's times when we move forth on our path and there's someone that comes up to us that says, you're really strong. And you might look at that person and say, are they looking at someone else? Because I don't feel that I'm strong. Right. So again, all of these qualities and characteristics, they're so important to help our children with and to be able to understand. And especially, I really want to get your thoughts on this as well, too, before we continue talking more about your book is, is that I really believe that children's books are disguised as children's books, but they're meant for adults. There's a lot of adults who move through their own insecurities and self-doubt and i'm just curious to hear how your book has impacted adults that have come across your path whether they be moms or dads or grandparents and educators could you share with us really the experience of how shenley's story shenley o'doodle half golden half poodle has made on the adults that have actually enjoyed your book well i enjoy talking with people about it and um they read it with their children and then that sort of opens the the gate for discussions on you know don't judge people how they by how they look um give mm. everybody a chance you know we're all special we all have different gifts and that's what makes the world the place that it is if we were all the same what a boring world it would be but we, you know, you accept other people and, you know, give everybody a chance, uh, show kindness, you know, work as a team, help each other out. And I have heard that um, 
children and adults have gotten that message and that was my goal i love that and and there's uh there's a phrase that i feel a little forced helped me to coin after reading your book which is doggy diversity oh and i like that and doggy diversity and there's different breeds of dogs so obviously you're helping children and adults to learn more about golden doodles but also to introduce other dogs as well too you could have just had this be a book about shenley just one dog and talk about golden doodles but why was it important for you to incorporate other breeds of dogs into your story to 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 have it make more of an impact well, I wanted to um, teach a little bit about some of the inherent traits that go with different breeds. You know, for example, when you hear of a Doberman Pinscher, a lot of times they're watchdogs, if you will. Um, uh, Shenley um, is a mix of the, the two breeds. And um, her fellow hero and sidekick, Fred, is a mix of a basset hound and a fox terrier so basset hounds are known for being very good searchers and fox terriers have great stamina so coupled with shenley who has the poodle smarts and the golden sense of smell they really became very complementary of each other and to each other and they worked as a dynamic duo to show some teamwork and just help look for some missing dogs the message of friendship as well is another great quality within your book because when little ones are starting off on their path right when I, I remember you know going back when I was in preschool I know one of the earliest I guess you could call it insecurities that I had is, you know, will I make friends and who will my first friend be? And so when you see Shenley again, experiencing some insecurity and you see this heartfelt connection, even though again, you know, she's introduced to, to other dogs and, you know, some get her, some don't, but the bond that she shares, as you said, with Fred is just like, it's the, the two of them create this almost instantaneous bond and as you talked about how they really develop this very strong sense of teamwork together with one another once um and again without giving away the whole story in the process but there's um they're really called into action they, they they're called in to save the day and the both of them they use their 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 gifts this is another message within your book again we all have those inherent not only inherent worth but very unique gifts and both Shenley and Fred take the time to combine those together to save the day as well um dog lovers I really feel are going to appreciate and really everyone who enjoys your book will be appreciating the illustrations that are found within the pages of Shenley O'Doodle half golden half poodle your experience in working with Harry Avera, one of the one of the questions that I always love asking during children's book spotlight series episodes, depending upon if an author is published or self-published, sometimes authors are able to communicate with their illustrators every day and you know be on the phone with them two, three hours. But many times the author really has to trust the fact that the illustrator is seeing the heart the intention the vision of what you want to create in their own mind's eye in their own heart so could you talk to us about your experience in working with Harry and really how he helped to bring your story alive absolutely um well Harry lives in Indonesia and um April had worked with him in the past and recommended him as being a wonderful illustrator of dogs so she was sort of the mediator and shared my dream and vision and she went between harry and i and through zoom and email um we made it work and i think he did a beautiful job of the illustrations i think um i don't know if there even are uh golden doodles in indonesia but he definitely captured shenley o'doodle for me and, and isn't that something about dogs, how even if we're communicating with someone on the other side of the world, how the heart of a dog 
is something that just translates time, distance, space, language, race, age, sex, you name it, because dogs really are unconditional love. And that yeah. message is something that is very much being shared. I really love the, I pay attention to what some people may refer to as like the small potatoes, so to speak, but just like the color scheme that you use for the cover art of your book and just the way in which like Shenley takes front and center and you're really able to connect with her heart and her soul right even before you open up the book and i feel that's really important and integral because that's the first thing that you see before you crack open a children's book before you actually enjoy the book in its entirety little forest and i are beginning to wind down our time with our featured guest here on episode number 171 of the children's book spotlight series children's author Annesley Hackathorn. We are fully immersed in her new children's book, Shenley O'Doodle, Half Golden, Half Poodle. We encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars to head on over to amazon.com if that is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing. While there, you can leave a five-star review for Shenley O'Doodle, Half Golden, Half Poodle. If you feel guided to do so, that is one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Annesley to let her know that she is doing wonderful and much-needed work for children, parents, families, educators, those who love great children's books in the process. You can also, if you are a teacher, principal, librarian, superintendent, and wish to be able to set up a virtual author school visit, with Annesley this spring or as part of the 2023-2024 back to school season and the forthcoming school year ahead, you can head on over to her official website, which is virginiabeachgoldendoodles.com. We've included that below in the description below to make things easier in the process as well. Now, circling back to the theme of this episode, we talk about self-doubt and it's, you know, it's, it's something that really needs to be talked about because there's a lot of people that are struggling. There's children, teenagers, adults, senior citizens that are struggling with anxiety, depression, um, that are just, that it, it, it's still, it's something that really impacts me. The fact that there's people that actually feel that life isn't worth living. And there's so much to be able to enjoy about life. And this is one of the many things about dogs, how they remind us that definitely life is worth living and that we have a mission and a purpose. And one of the things that we really love to do on each children's book spotlight series episode is to provide some tangible support, whether it be tips, tools, strategies, that parents, caregivers, grandparents, educators can immediately extract from a children's book spotlight series episode and begin to implement them into the lives of the child or the children in their lives. So why, why, do, why do you feel that it's important for us as parents and caregivers to support our children when they experience self-doubt? Well, I think it's important to... Um build them up and let children know how special they all are and how they all have different talents, but everyone has talents mm. and we learn from each other. We learn each other's talents. It's important that we accept each other and that we are overall kind. I mean, everyone can be kind. Kindness is a wonderful thing and being different is a good thing. It just, it, diversity and uniqueness are just two wonderful characteristics. And they're again, you know, not judging people by how they look on the outside, but, uh, you know, so important how they are on the inside. You know, we all have different gifts and we use them in different ways. And I think that's important for children and adults. Mm. And what comes to mind when you share that is, is that, we're really doing our part to help our children to, to help them set up set themselves up for success and there's going to come a point in time where you know mom and dad aren't going to be there and grandma and grandpa aren't going to be there and they're going to have to be able to trust their own decision making process and to trust their intuition and believe in themselves because at the end of the day you spend more time with yourself than anybody else and if you don't believe in yourself that no one else is really going to believe in you. So again, as children's minds and hearts are like sponges, by 
helping little ones to be able to remind them this why this is one of the reasons why for for nearly five years with doing the children's book spotlight series we always go back to one of our tried and true trusted favorites and really uh, someone who's really influenced our work here with children at Pierre from there and that's Mr. Rogers at the end of every episode of Mr. Rogers neighborhood he always said in his own way that I like you that I love you just the way that you are that you're special just the way that you are and he said that so often and it could seem like you know maybe if you're if you watch many episodes of Mr. Rogers neighborhood it can be like okay Fred you know thanks for sharing that again but kids need to hear that adults need to be able to hear that so getting back to that tangible ways that we can help our children as well what are some ways that we can do our part to our to encourage our little ones to believe in themselves more and in the process do the same for us well i think never be afraid to try something new um support is is so important and just embrace the talents that are within you um we all have very very different skills and talents and you know just be complimentary of each other and encouraging and non-judgmental and overall kind that that message of of kindness really is paramount because it begins with kindness with self in order to be kind to other people and that the whole kindness and believing in yourself it's really interesting how there's some some beautiful synergy between the two and i always there is one of I, i've had many conversations with with parents over the near decade that we've been blessed to do publicity work for children's authors that have shared with me when they read children's books and they and they're in the process of either reparenting or healing the relationship with their inner child and when they're when they're able to strengthen that relationship with themselves with their inner child the relationship with their own child or the or the child of the children in their life flourishes and blossoms so this is one of the reasons why you know like we still have that inner child that's within us and it's so important to embrace that to not stuff that down in any way shape or form because again then we're doing our part to really um show up and be present more for the children in our lives i'm a huge proponent of coloring one of the things that uh, i i think one of my fondest memories growing up is having my crayola color pencils and being able to just you know color whenever i whenever i felt like it but you're helping children and adults alike to be able to connect with the hearts of golden doodles beyond the pages of Shenley O'Doodle have golden half poodle through your coloring book could you talk to us about Virginia Beach golden doodles your coloring book and some of the positive feedback that you've received on it whether it be from children from parents from families from educators yes absolutely it was a very very fun project so Shenley was from my very first litter of Virginia Beach Golden Doodles and that was like I said in 2003. So there were many Virginia Beach Golden Doodles out there because after 20 years that's some dogs. So you like you shared where I have the Facebook group and the Instagram and the website. So I reached out to some owners and I said send me your best picture of your Virginia Beach Golden Doodle. And I was overwhelmed. Hundreds of hundreds of just beautiful pictures. Some people couldn't narrow it down to one. They would send me two and three. So I sifted through and I came up with 124 of what I thought were the most beautiful pictures and published it in the coloring book. There again, it was during COVID. So people were spending more time at home, you know, the stress level in the world and in schools and with adults and children was very high. So it became um, a fun activity for parents and children to do together because, you know, during COVID, there was a lot of adult coloring books for relaxation and a little bit of art therapy, but just the, the, um, 
it really makes you smile. Some of the pictures of the dogs, you can see the expressions on their face and the backgrounds. You know, they're in parades or they're on boats or they're just living life with their families. So it was a very fun project to do. I'm really glad to hear that you enjoyed your experience with that because there, there's something about coloring. And, you know, I, I, I would be curious to even just, you know, like have a conversation with, you know, like a, uh, uh, someone who has a PhD or, or, or a scientist even about like, you know, I know there's been statistics that have been done, research that has been done about the impact that coloring has on the mind, body, spirit connection, how it's very relaxing, it's very therapeutic. And again, like there is life, if you, it's, it's so fast, you know, things are, are picking up speed, intensity, pace and whatnot. This is why it's so important to have those things in our lives, those pillars that help us to ground. And coloring is one of the most amazing ways that you can do that. I also love coloring because, and, and, and your, your coloring book specifically because you're encouraging children to connect with their creativity right now likely there probably isn't a, a sky blue virginia beach golden doodle but if a little one says you know what sky blue is my favorite color i'm gonna create a sky blue virginia beach golden doodle y you know let the creativity take flight because you know when you have so many crayons thanks to the good folks at crayola you can have, you know, there's the different colors. There's your burnt sienna. There's your periwinkles. There's your royal blues. There's so many different colors in the process. But yeah, huge proponent of, of coloring. So I really love how the message of golden doodles can can jump beyond Shenley O'Doodle. This is, you know, and you've probably heard and received feedback from, from parents over the course of the past couple of years. Like, I'd love to learn more. Like, do you have anything else? Do you have, and then it's like, oh yes, I have the coloring book as well too. So it's so great how those are like a, a healthy one-two punch for kids. It really feels, honestly, that you have so much more to give and to share. I'm curious, do you have any plans to pen another book? And if so, if it feels in resonance with you, can you give us a sneak peek about what we can possibly expect in the future from you? Oh, I'm excited. Well, one of Shenley's messages throughout the book was that you should follow your dreams and you shouldn't give up. And Shenley wanted to be a service dog. That was her goal in the book. So she wanted to be able to help other people. Mm -hmm. So it is my hope that Shenley's determination will shine through and she will follow her dream and become a service dog. I love that. There's, there's so many more... And even though when, when, when dogs transition and they pass on, their love remains and their impact remains. And that's one of the cool things about Shenley is the fact that, you know, she's inspiring children every day, children that she never even met or will have the opportunity to meet. And, and, and that just has to be such a good feeling in the process. Um, one of the one of the one of the several ways that we close out each children's book spotlight series episode, going back to the aforementioned Mr. Rogers, huge influence with us here at PR from the heart. Whenever and and he did this most notably um, in different ways, but when he received his lifetime achievement award at the daytime Emmy shortly before he passed from stomach cancer. And, and he always kept the time, whether it be 15 seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. And he also did this in some college commencement speeches and talks across the country as well. He encouraged us to remember those who helped love us into being. And that was his way of saying, remember those who help you to believe in yourself when maybe you had a little bit of a difficulty believing in you, those aforementioned earth angels that I discussed previously, who are some of the people that you would like to publicly recognize here on episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlight series who helped love you and as Lee Hackathorn into being? Well, I had a very supportive mom and dad. My mom is a huge Mr. Rogers fan and lives in Pittsburgh. Ugh. Um, and my, my two sons are very empowering to 
you know, believe in me and encourage me. Um, so I just feel very, very blessed. I've had a wonderful life and Shenley certainly enhanced it and just made me smile so many days. Well, we are going to be giving away a special sneak peek, a special exclusive here on episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlights, as we've been talking about it for the past several months. But we are looking forward to returning to one of our favorite cities in the country, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, later this spring. It's literally just going to be in a couple of weeks. And we are going to be recording myself and David Newell, who, of course, we remember him. We love him as the beloved Mr. McFeely on the long-running children's television program, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Annesley is going to be joining David and I in studio at the Center for Media Innovation in downtown Pittsburgh. And we are going to be sharing even more of Shenley O'Doodle, half golden, half poodle. And David and I are going to be giving our neighborly review of Shenley O'Doodle, half golden, half poodle. So again, stay tuned to PR from the Heart's official website and social media platforms at PR from the Heart. And when Annesley's episode is released, her featured episode of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast in studio at the Center for Media Innovation in downtown Pittsburgh. We really do hope that you enjoy that. Uh, we're also huge Disney buffs here at the Children's Book Spotlight series. And we always go back to one of our favorite beloved uh, Disney animated classics that really helped us to remember that we have it within ourselves to bring our dreams, our desires, our goals, our visions to life and help other people to do the same in the process. So we all remember the late Robin Williams who voiced the genie of the lamp. And so we have a little segment here on the children's book spotlight series called Three Wishes. So this is a genie lamp, Annesley. So you are being given three wishes. You have given so freely and so kindly to your family, to children, parents, families, educators, those who love great children's books throughout Virginia, across the country, and around the world. So this is your opportunity to receive. You are being given three wishes. I think the only automatic disqualifiers are A, you can't ask for more wishes, and B, you can't have someone fall in love with you. That has to happen organically. But everything according to the genie of the lamp is fair game, so to speak. So you are being given three wishes. What, what is it that you would like to wish for? Annesley, they can be for yourself. They can be for the children of the world. What is it that you would like to wish for? I would like the world to be a more kind place. I would like just kindness to be a lot more noticed and um out there if you will mm. because i think that it's just so healing and empowering to people so that would be my first wish um like i mentioned i have two sons i would like to see them flourish and just continue growing to be the amazing men that they are turning into and i would just like um, dogs, just uh, I would like you know people to to have dogs and experience the love of dogs and pets. Not necessarily mm. always dogs, although I am a dog lover, but just to have that relationship and you know that unconditional love that they give and are always willing to give. That's a wonderful um, experience to have. And I would wish that a lot of people could have that. Mm. Those are those are really beautiful, powerful wishes. And there's so many dogs out there that don't have homes. And there's so many, like however many billion people live on this planet right now, you know, to extend and um, to, to, to share further, to put that, th those wishes that you had mentioned, to put them more out into the, uh, into the stratosphere, so to speak, is, is that, you know, wishing that every, every dog that's out there could find a loving home, whatever that may necessarily look like. I think that that's so important because, you know, dogs bring again, so much love and compassion and understanding and non-judgment. Even if you have a day that's meh, your dog is always there for you in the process. Again, we encourage all of you, our listeners and viewers, our friends and neighbors, and of course, our fellow shining stars to head on over to 
Annesley's official website, virginiabeachgoldendoodles.com for all educators across the country, teachers, principals, librarians, superintendents. If you are interested in facilitating a virtual or in-person author school visit <coughs> with Annesley during the springtime, during the forthcoming back to school season, or as part of the 2023-2024 school year, you can connect with her via her official website. If Amazon.com is your preferred online vehicle of your choosing, you can head there, purchase your copy of Shenley O'Doodle, Half Golden, Half Poodle. One of the many ways you can pledge your support for Anna's Lee is to leave a five-star review, to let her know that she is doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books and little forest you know what happens when we hear the trolley when we hear the trolley that means that it is time to go but raise your hand if you have had fun on episode number 171 of the children's book spotlight series little forest is raising his paw i'm raising my hand and is is raising her and we see many hands on screen from little ones and you know what we like to say that means mission accomplished and job well done. And yes, there are many more magical trolley stops to come as spring is literally just around the corner. And then we are heading into one of our absolute favorite times of the year. That is the summer reading season. So if you are a children's author, if you are a middle grade author, or if you are a children's book illustrator and would love to share your inspiring story and the release of your brand new children's book, just as Annesley did here this week on the Children's Book Spotlight series, we encourage you to head on over to our official website, prfromtheheart.com, or connect with us via any of our social media platforms that you now see on screen. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all at PR from the Heart. As we alluded to beforehand, we are really looking forward to returning to Point Park University in downtown Pittsburgh, the gorgeous Center for Media Innovation. And of course, David Newell and I are going to be recording two very special episodes of our Neighborly Reviews bookcast for the months of April and May. We, of course, have our March bookcast prior to that. But we are really looking forward to sharing and reviewing and delivering especially the newest heartfelt reviews from the newest children's books from the Shining Stars in the Kid Lit community right here at PR from the Heart. So if you are a children's author and would love to have David and I share and review your brand new children's book on a forthcoming edition of the Neighborly Reviews bookcast, you know where to connect with us via our official website at prfromtheheart.com and any of our social media platforms as well. And if you are a children's author and would love to have us assist you in having your dreams take flight in 2023, whether it be to create a feature television interview, to create and facilitate a book media tour in a city or cities of your choosing, let us see how we can be of service to you by heading on over to our official website, prfromtheheart.com. Schedule your courtesy connection call. And again, let us see how we can be of service to you. There is so much more. You have not seen the last of Annesley and Shenley O'Doodle, Half Golden, Half Poodle. We look forward to sharing more information from Annesley over the course of the coming weeks ahead. Again, you can stay tuned to our official social media platforms at PR from the Heart, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. One more time, we encourage you, if you haven't had the opportunities to purchase your copy of Shenley O'Doodle, Half Golden, Half Poodle, it makes a great Easter gift, one of the top reads for your summer reading season or if you're just simply looking for a wonderful and special gift for a dog lover in your life, you can head on over to amazon.com, leave a five-star review, one of the many ways that you can pledge your support for Annesley to let her know that she is doing wonderful and much needed work for children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books. And again, all educators, whether you're a teacher, principal, librarian, or superintendent, and you would love to be able to have Annesley share more about Shenley's journey and to share Shenley O'Doodle Half Golden Half Poodle, you can connect with her via her official website at virginiabeachgoldendoodles.com. Stay connected with Annesley as well on social media. We've included her social media platforms in the description below. But again, this has been a magical trolley stop. There are so many more to come. So we want to thank you for spending some quality time with us here. You okay, little force? Yeah. We're spending some quality time with us here in our neighborhood this week at the Children's Book Spotlight Series for your continued support of PR from the Heart, for your continued support of the Children's Book Spotlight Series, for your continued support of children's authors and illustrators and middle grade authors. 
especially children's authors such as Annesley, who again are doing wonderful and much needed work and sharing it with children, parents, families, educators, and those who love great children's books for your continued support of local libraries and children's and independent bookstores. Truly the pillars of our community. And above all else, we want to thank you for helping us to walk home, the children of the world. One final tip of the cap to our beloved neighbor, Mr. Rogers. I really feel that in many ways that he managed to find the fountain of youth. Did you know that Mr. Rogers weighed 143 pounds for the majority of his natural adult life? Remember, there's one letter in I, four letters in love, and three letters in you. That was one of his ways of saying how much that he cared about us. One letter in I, four letters in love, three letters in you. He reminded us at the end of every episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood that I like you and I love you just the way that you are. Well, as Annesley and Little Force were kind enough to join us here this week, we in turn and in kind are sharing with you our favorite numbers here at PR from the Heart and the Children's Book Spotlight Series, which are two fourth readers, two letters in we, four letters in love, three letters in you, and we are reminding you of your inherent worth and your inherent value. We are reminding you that we believe in you, that you are loved, that you are whole, you are healthy, you are complete, that you are special just the way that you are. So for Annesley Hackathorn, for Little Forest, and for myself, John Massalonis, we want to thank you for spending some quality time with us here in our neighborhood. If this message has inspired you, if it's lifted your spirits, if you now know that, hey, it's time to get that special furry friend in my life, just like I did right before Thanksgiving, we encourage you, if you haven't had the opportunities to do so, to subscribe to PR from the Heart's official YouTube channel and to share this very special trolley stop that you have been enjoying. That has been episode number 171 of the Children's Book Spotlight Series. So again, for on your favorite social media platforms of your choosing. So for Annesley Hackathorn, for Little Forest, and again for myself, John Massalonis, thank you for helping us to walk home, the children of the world, our fellow friends, our fellow neighbors, and our fellow shining stars. Goodbye for now. Wait, bye-bye, Little Forest. Bye-bye. <laughs>